So first we have our meeting minutes, February 24th. I really like, I see that. Okay. So there's one part where it's, um, have resident Laura Geisel, so that, oh. which I, I was all right with. I was like, yeah. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. No, that's it. I was like, who is this person? <laughs> what does she speak of? So, so, yeah. Did you guys have a chance to look at him? Any questions? Is that page four we're talking about, resident? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I am. It's Otter's fault. So, yeah. <laughs> Any concerns, questions? No, I, can I make, I, yeah. I'd like to just make one comment. I really appreciated the fact that in approval of minutes that you indicated why the two of us did not vote, which was, uh, that was really good. I mean, as opposed to simply, oh, they abstained. And, and I, I appreciated that. So people know. You know. Yeah. You know, and then I um, here was uh, Chair Geisel noted proposed change to 20 55 outside storage and materials granted. On um, page three? Uh, page three, page three. Okay. down at the bottom. Okay. Granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals to change to Planning Board. And our and agricultural materials being exempt from the requirements of obtaining a permit. So I didn't know that the planning board was going to be given variances. No, I don't think that's. I don't think we changed anything. So that's right. Yeah. Well, okay. we discussed a lot of things, but I do. Right. Uh, remember that that yeah there was strike one of the that things that came up that. yeah because we were gonna they had requested something like special permits to be the planning board and we said no we just want to leave it right. we would recommend leaving it the zoning board so I think that might be all right, right. maybe that's where it got kind of confused but yeah yeah I mean so I can see where it kind of good mm -hmm. yeah but I know we didn't change anything to yeah. that. If I heard right, I think all of those farm things have been put on hold. Yeah, I haven't heard anything else about them. So are we able to there's add? a public hearing um, yeah, this, this coming Wednesday. Um, Three of them. Okay. Public proposed changes. Signs, fences, 120 7. Yeah, I know. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking, too. It's 120 7. Thank you. <laughs> I gotta look at those. <laughs> exactly. I only also, I'm also Isn't thinking of the code sections. Uh, R20 residential district. Oh, that's right. Will be one. The changes there are relating to what is permitted uses or especially permitted uses in R20 residential district. Remember, like the horticulture nurseries, mm -hmm. kind of stables. That's stables. Not Did all of that is what, and, and yeah. yeah, and I have to refer specifically to what was actually changed. But right. Yeah. Generally, the changes were the horticultural, the the um the stables so and, mm -hmm. the and then i think partners. that farm stands was added as a permitted use subject to certain conditions sure. mm -hmm. um, instead of being a requiring a special permit okay so that was specifically to 120-7 so sign expenses and the permitted use correct okay. You all sat with the minutes, everybody? Okay. I'll make the motion. Mm -hmm. Second it to 
Make a motion to approve the minutes with changes. Not Member Hetrick. <laughs> Aye. Deputy Chair Hart. Aye. Chair Geisel. Aye. <laughs> Um, so again, tonight we don't have any formal applications. I'm sure this is going to change as the weather hopefully warms up, start doing things. Um, but I would like to just review um, the content of a proposal from the planning board. So at the town board meeting, January 26, um, the board passed resolution 84-2022, which tasked the planning board with beginning the process of reviewing the town code for needed updating and providing a report to the town board proposed amendments or additions. So as far as I know still, and Robert, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but the planning board did not reach any agreement on this flag lot proposal in their March meeting. Correct. So, so Scott has, has drafted and proposed this. Uh, he used other town codes as part of his, his basis for doing this. It was discussed extremely briefly at the March planning board meeting, and it was intended to be discussed on Tuesday, but they didn't have enough members to really have a full discussion, so it wasn't addressed at the Tuesday meeting. Okay. So I think it's the intention to continue to hash, hash this out with the planning board. Great. But this is certainly Scott's, the, the chair's thoughts, absolutely. Okay. And now with just you know the three of us here tonight, but at least we can sort of take a look at it think about it and maybe bring it back up at our next meeting. What do you think? You know, I'm not sure because I don't want to discuss it without Richard or John because they have a lot of mm. experience with this and the flag lots and knowing. I mean, right now, as far as I know, there's nothing. So this is a proposal to have something in our town code. Um, do you guys, do you have any thoughts? Did you get a chance to look at it prior to? Tonight, I did. Kind of. um, yeah. I don't know. And this may sound harsh, but if they want to stop all building in the town of Rush, they need to put a sign up. Okay. Um, in here, it doesn't really tell me what the issue is with flag lots. Okay. I received a, an email from Scott, you know, at one time, and it was a little sarcastic. Um, and just one of the phrases was, he's never seen a bent flagpole. Well, if you look out here on the 4th of July, the pole goes straight up, and one comes off anywhere from 90 to straight up, okay? But I read this, and, and I, I can't, I can't wrap my head around just what they're after. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with really the safety or the welfare of the residents per se. Okay. Um, lots are used for a means of the landlord to develop the interior of his partial, okay, which avoids the need for a partial owner to fund building a road, okay? It really doesn't, the fund to build the road doesn't really play a part in it, okay? Of a developer, if a developer's gonna build a development, he's gonna put a road in, but he's only gonna put it in if he can sell houses and sell them reasonable, okay? So you have like Beyondo, okay? They jammed them in and stuff like that put them on so that really doesn't play a part if you're going to get a homeowner that wants to do it okay but they're undesirable compared to shared roads okay why would a flag lot i mean i'm just throwing this out yeah, here no, I'm, I just, I'm learning why I'm would learning. why would a flag lot okay be undesirable compared to a shared roads it, it doesn't make sense it's a private it's either a private drive private road or a dedicated road and it says here, because they increased the area of impervious pavement and increased the number of driveway access points on a public road. I've never had the state or county come out and say, you can't have a driveway here because we already have X amount on the road. State and county, um, they only care about site distance per se. 
Okay, and then there's other factors, okay. But they only deal with basically site distance. So we have a lot of common shared entrances to houses here in the town of Rush, okay. Yeah, like I said, I've never seen that. But impervious, okay, I don't know, a 50 foot right away with a 12 foot stone driveway compared to a 60 foot right of way with a 24 foot wide paved road. Okay, I mean, so I don't quite get the comparison there. Um, they create driveways to the side of other residents. Okay, on nearby lots fronting the same road. They create awkward placement of residents behind these frontage lots. Driveway next to a house. I don't know. There's a driveway next to my house. When it was interesting when we received the the issue to look at as a potential issue, uh, which is not hasn't been passed yet. But right. Planning. Oh no no. But. So I decided to drive around. That was, I, I decided visually to look. And visually, so I drove north on East Henrietta Road. Now it's not the town, it wasn't in the town of Russia, it was in Henrietta. Multitudes of these flag lots. I mean, just drive up on the right-hand side, you'll see flag lots, flag lots, and flag lots, you'll see, which did not did not appear to me to be problematic to anyone who was involved, probably because the flag lot was created by the person who had the house in the front, and then they divided the property up and somebody bought it. So I wasn't I wasn't really I really didn't understand the issue that was okay. being dealt with. And and the same goes on Middle Road as well. I'm, I'm middle, so I, you know, I decided visually because I couldn't get my handle on what the issue was here. So I look, you know, I'm middle road, sim, similar kind of in Henrietta, though, not in Rush, mm -hmm. Henry, in Henrietta. You know, there are flag lots um, down middle road as well. And so I didn't understand all the issues that were related to this. And, um, you know, uh, and there may be nuances, but yeah. Well, like I said, I, I didn't yeah. get it. Um, yeah. you not, do you have any idea how many flag lots are in the town of Rush? Sixty-seven. No clue. Huh? I just guessed sixty-seven. <laughs> you guessed a couple or more. <laughs> Seventy. Seventy. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That was good guess. Some <laughs> lots, some flag lots. <laughs> you win. Okay. Only have easements. Mm -hmm. Okay, a private road, four houses or less, three of them are going to have easements. Mm. They are not going to own frontage on the main road. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But but like I said, I didn't I didn't quite understand this. And in, in the email that I read, and now I'm being sarcastic. I thought that we all knew that the world was round and not flat and square. Okay. When there was a provision in there that the flag lot has to have 90 degree corners. Mm. Okay. There's nothing in town 90 degrees. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if somebody lives on the corner of Phelps and 15, they live on a corner. Okay. They have streets on both sides. Okay. Use of a flag lot as a means of avoiding such road access shall be discouraged by the planning board. Why? If you could put a house there and have a driveway, why would you discourage a driveway for a flag lot per se? I mean, this, these are just existing on, you know, public or private. Uh, a flag lot requires a road for a subdivision. That one that we did, Richard, over here on um, East River Road, mm -hmm and whatnot, in here, in the explanation, the planning board would have insisted Richland to have 60 feet, not 50, okay? Yeah, that's right. In case they wanted to put a private or a public road in. He knew that, number one, but number two, you can't build back there, okay? 
There's 62 acres there that you'll never be able to build on. It's in the floodplain. Part of it's wetlands, okay? You know, so to me- so That wouldn't have applied maybe in that situation or something like that. Right. But if you look at, um, so like I said, that one there, why would you do that or make them do 60? And not only that, but if we did 60, we would have had to give the existing house a variance because it wouldn't have had enough in the front. Okay, so now there's two variances. So then it goes on here. It does to, to prevent landlocked partials if direct frontage access to a partial, potential partial, blah, 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 an existing or new public or private road. Use of a flag lot as a means of avoiding such road access shall be discouraged by the planning board. So I can put a private road, I can put a dedicated road, but I can't put a driveway on a flag lot. It, I mean, like I said, this doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I maybe, and I'm throwing it out there so some, maybe somebody can. Yeah, and I think that's kind of, you know, I mean, this is just the start of right. the planning yep. board too, and that's why yep. they wanted our sort of feedback to be yeah. able to ask them. You know, maybe these reasons that he has for their overall goals aren't kind of, okay, well, that doesn't mean much to us. Right, yet. but it's um, like flag lot requires road for a subdivision. Okay, any other remaining land shall be labeled remaining lands not approved for building. So if I had 40 acres, I broke 10 out and I had a flag line. Now I can't do anything with my 30 acres. I, I, yeah, I think John Frew mentioned that one as well. I think that was yeah, an right. issue. Yeah. For him, yeah, so. flag not shall not be approved with a later resubdivision of the same partial. And also the 500 feet to another flag that access course. Yeah. Um, is there anything, okay, we'll try to flip it, flip it. Is there anything about this that we think is good or needed in the yeah, town code? I think we need a flag lot thing. Okay. I think it ought to be a flag lot is a corridor, 50 foot minimum, because that's what it is at the center line. It's kind of like a cell tower under, I forgot what it was, what section it is, but they have for cell towers. It's 120, 17. It's underneath the minimum square footage and stuff. Yeah, I looked at it today. Okay, sure where a cell tower, you can put a cell tower in, this in this case for a flag lot, you could not get around the square footage. Okay, I mean if it was an R30, it has to be a minimum 30 for the main portion, and the corridor cannot be included into that. Okay. Simple as that. But when you start talking about putting up berms and buffers and stuff like that, that creates problems. So we would like to, see to, something to, a little to, more to, to simplify the whole simplify. thing, you could put a definition of mm -hmm. flag lot yeah. underneath the definition of flag lot and under, well, you've got it from under that section for section for cell towers. And I'd read some of the old zoning board meetings and it looked like we were looking for a definition for flag lots from maybe the town board at the time. And I never saw where we got one, like an actual definition. So that might be just the sort of like, let's start with just a definition. Right. What that is, that is agreed upon. That's a common discussion. A lot of minimum meetings. death must be agreed upon. Definitions of minimum things area yeah. help us. Sure. Yeah, then it's kind of like, okay, somebody would, like they would know. I mean, we know what it is, but now it's kind of like, okay, with the corridor, 50 foot minimum. Oh, this book doesn't like have it in it. Mm -hmm. I thought I saw it. There was, yeah, I saw it in maybe not that one, but the one I have at home. Yeah, because, oh, wait a minute. The minimum area dimensions of a lot and subdivided premises contained in 20 17 shall not apply to tell. telecommunication towers and other accessories, fillings, or structures constructed in accordance. Uh, with the standard set forth on 2064, which is another um, code for that. But you could put B, C, I don't know, I don't know the legal end of it, but you could put D, flag lots, okay, must have the minimum at, 
at the center line, okay, minimum corridor, and the area has to be of 150 by 200. That's what we, you weren't here for that, but that's what we did. We had one over on telephone road extension. The problem with that one was we didn't give it because, I'm not trying to kick them, but the town sold a piece of property with just an easement, okay? And at one time they were going to extend, they were gonna kind of buy something, they were gonna shuffle some stuff around to make it a private drive. And then the, the uh, owner decided not to do that. He was gonna build a house and one for his daughter too. <clears throat> but it's because the town only, when they sold that lot, they'd only given an easement. So we actually turned that one down, okay? But basically, you know, a lot of this stuff, like I said, in my opinion, would be just simplified. Definition of a flag lot is a corridor, no less than 50 for a um, driveway, 50 for a private, 60 for a dedicated road. And the area must meet it. I've probably done over 80 to 100 flag lots and I've never seen one built for the minimum square footage. And the other reason that they do flag lots there, here is, is because of the terrain and the way it is. You have to, you take like number six road, the Hunting High Falls five points. Mm -hmm. That's almost 4,000 feet of depth, okay? Take the Rush Alps, I call them the Rush Alps up here, Stony Brook, okay? <laughs> you know, flag lots. Some, I know people that live on flag lots. Can I ask you, is that an easement? You have easement in your deed for that, right? Yes, it's yes. a private road. Right, right, it's a private road. Yeah, so I would just say, I don't know why they just don't simplify it and do that. And, and I would agree. I read this and then I thought, I'm really not sure what they're getting at here with some of these and that it could be simplified by doing a definition, like you're saying. And uh, the complexity of this is maybe not necessary. Right, you know, um, yeah, minimum lot area, it has to be two acres. So why, we're not gonna start a whole separate different zoning now, you know, as yeah. 20, 30 or whatever. Uh, yeah, flag lot larger than 10 acres, Okay, to minimum road frontage shall be no less than, you know, a public road. Yeah, I, the thing of it is that really kind of got me was when I got into this and looking at it is how inconsistent, and I'm not trying to kick anybody, how inconsistent the town has been over the years. Okay, on some planning board, say if it's 60 or 50 feet, it goes back, we give them a subdivide, okay. Um, they did one over on Wardell Road with the 60 acres, 60 foot in, 60 foot in. They cut it in half. This person bought 30 acres and acquired it into that lot. But they never came back to the zoning board for a variance for that 60. Okay. Um, but a lot of it, you know, the reason for flag lots is, is because of the terrain we're in. Okay, the location they are and what they are, you know. You know Bruce Martin. You don't know Bruce? Mm -hmm. Memory Lane, Polly Pet Cemetery, oh, 139. I know yeah. He lives up by the tower. Okay. Mm -hmm. The only access he's got is 10 foot easement <laughs> up yeah. memory lane to his property, you know. That was built way back and that was the military built that. But yeah. And then, you know, 50% greater. Like I said, I just read through this and I, I was trying to wrap my head around just what they were trying to achieve. Yeah, require such plantings, you know, say berms or whatever. There's no limitation to that, you know, per se. Necessary to protect such privacy at the time of construction or ongoing. You know, road construction, all this building is all governed already. The sad part about it, retention, detention ponds. Look at the ones we have in town. Half of them are gone. 
The other half, nobody takes care of. They're just mosquito infested messes, you know. But like I said, to me, if they just simplify it, that's it. Yeah. Is there, I just, for my own curiosity, is there any, anything to number one that he has here for the reasoning? Are there really certain routine flag lot variances? The There's what now? Number one on his oh, reasoning for it. Yeah, like are there certain routine flag lot variances that have been approved that just add time, cost, and steps? I mean, if that's not true, I'd like to at least, you know, kind of rebut that. So well, it, it is. doesn't look like it. Well, it is. Okay. Um, like I said, if we put a definition of flag lot mm -hmm. and we add it to, I don't know, can that be added to like a cell tower like the cell tower one can? So I, I I think it would be possible to add a section to 120-17, just as similar to what we did with like the sign law, where you add a flag law and then you include in their minimum area all the all the different categories you could include notations for whatever ones you wanted to no, include notations for. Right. And then yeah, you could just probably be a separate section for flag law code defining flag lots and saying generally what what zoning districts they were allowed in. Right. Right. Yes, you could okay. do that. Your so that might get rid of that number one concern there. If we actually had a definition, then there wouldn't be kind of routine variances that are requested. Yeah, I mean, let's take like Chris Burrell. He broke that and just flip flopped mm -hmm. it. Okay, if that was in there, okay, um, yeah, planning board could have approved it. Okay, <clears throat> but when they, um, yeah. Because I guess if they went to Richland and said, no, we want 60, Richland can come and get a variance. Okay. Um, but Pinnacle Road, you know, in his email, Scott had a real problem with that. I didn't, I didn't see, I, I don't understand why he had a problem with it. You know? I, mean, I know there used to be a chair on the zoning board many years ago. That had problem with flag lots. Oh, I see. <laughs> I'm not talking about you. Oh, no. I'm talking about Don Van Lair. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, it's kind of like if we could get rid of maybe these routine variances that people are coming after with having a more simplified definition and <clears throat> what a flag lot is, then it's kind of like, all right, we're, we'd like to see that. Right. Will you take it? Sure. Yeah, I mean, you take like over there on um, on Pinnacle Road. If the planning board said no, they didn't like that or whatever, then they'd come back to zoning. And I don't think that's a good thing if it's written one way and had zoning change it without, you know, really any reason or fight. And the other thing, if we deny it, they appeal, we deny it and they go to court. Okay, so now we've spent, I mean, maybe this is what it is. Maybe it's to beat the landowner up. I'm a little well, defensive on that. property because my property <laughs> is my retirement. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and I looked at my across, property, and so. according to this, with angles and not 90 degrees, I could never sell it. Because sure. I have 37 angles on my property, even though I have 2,700 feet water property. Even, but, you're just yeah, but if they could just put change the definition of to a flag lot, which is the square footage and a corridor, then that's it. Sure he'll, sure he'll watch our YouTube. There's no one there. Well, he'll watch it after. Right. Yeah. Could you hand this to him? Please. Me? No, no, Joe. No. Okay. Yeah. Now they're passing notes. This is a list of all the flag lots in Rush, as opposed yeah, right. to my driving through any of them. Yeah, I do was ask. Oh no. It's great. more fun to drive around. Um, okay. The dog, the dog loves yeah. to ride. So that's the whole thing. Ellie's like, let's go. She's like, now she's gonna look at the list. You're like, we must forget. Now we'll go and look at more of them. <laughs> yeah. Um okay, so nothing else on that. Nope. The only other thing I just try to come up with an idea for kind of like our sample assignments to review so that we sort of have an idea who is responsible for applications that come. So like, let's say in May, 
we had you know two applications. So we know the people that are responsible for the first one and the second one without having to kind of discuss it here, you know, then you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm out of town all of May. Like, this isn't going to work for me, whatever. Um, it's just sort of an idea. So it's not not married to it. I just wanted to get sort of a, a pulse, a feel for if we're, you know, I just use like a randomizer tool on my Excel to keep kind of changing it around to, you know, that we're all working with each other as well so that we all learn mm -hmm. from each other and see different things. So it's like, okay, I'm not always working with Lee or Rick or Rich, you know, we're all working with each other to kind of learn, but that's it. It's just a thought, comments, concerns. I think it's a good idea. I especially think, you know, I used to use a technique at meetings where you know everybody sits in the same place. Well, that didn't happen when I was running a meeting. You know, people moved so that they had to have interaction with other people. And I think that's a good thing. And this does the same thing. You know, I get to work with with you, Lori, and with John. And then the next in June, I get to work with you, Lee. And I mean, I think it's I think it's a good thing to move things around because we do learn from each other. And you know we learn we learn a lot in, from each other. And I thought like that person, like those two people, are responsible for kind of you know Shepherding. the resolution and sharing with the rest of the board. If we couldn't all get there to see it, you know, sharing their so thoughts. So we don't on all have to go and visit the site. I don't know. I mean, maybe we do. Well, I'm just kind of like, okay, here are the two people that maybe are assigned to it. But maybe mm -hmm. it is like yes, that's part of our rules that we all have to go look at it. But two people are assigned to get the resolution ready and, you know, maybe talk to the home, whatever. So I'm just asking, like, you know, what are your thoughts? I don't know I how we, you've I, done I, it in the past. I think this is good, but I think we all need to visit an application site. Okay. As best yeah. as possible. Right, unless you're out of town or something. You know, right. like tonight, we all wouldn't have been able to visit. Uh, right, but in right. 60 days, you should be able to. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would say, you know, everybody has to go to the site. I like that. Yeah. And that can be kind of part of our sort of procedures when I, you know, so like everybody has to visit a site. And here's our kind of idea for our sample assignments for May, June, July. And maybe we won't have them, maybe we will, but at least then you kind of know what you have upcoming. That's good. So. My only thing. note here is mm -hmm. don't all go at the same time. Right. right. I don't go to so. Yeah. But you guys know, right? Then we FaceTime the other ones. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> no, nope. so, okay. only two can't have three. Yep. Nope. All right. So that was it. I just like to have things on paper. I'm one of those like nerdy type A personalities. So, uh -huh. um, but that's all I have. Does anyone else have anything else to share or anything from there? Can I have my paper back? Or did you give it to me? No, I didn't. No. Like, I want to make a copy of it. Can you <laughs> Can take I a picture of it with your sure. phone? Yeah, I can. Shall we make it? Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's not up to date. There should be six more added to that. Right, I saw that. <laughs> Basically, the last I remember, I'm sure there's more than that, but the last I remember, there was a little over 1,500 tax partials. That's maybe going back a bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. There were 1,500 tax partials. So flag lots are only about 5%. And I'm willing to bet that it's almost only 3% because we've had more, okay? But, you know, it's, I, not, it's not like, you know, it's not like we do 25 pool variances and need to change a variance for that, okay? Mm -hmm. and this is going back. You'll see some of them in there. Yeah, some of them only have three feet. I know of one that goes back 2,700 feet and they don't even have an easement. <laughs> it's, no, it'll be a mess. Something. It won't be my mess. <laughs> right, for right. someone else. But yeah. Well, I, I remember when we sold our house in Troy, we had a shared driveway with uh, with our next door neighbor. Did you have problems? We never had a problem, but we had to have attorneys involved from both sides to make sure that it was all written down so that when the house was sold that shared driveway was a legal agreement that carried over to whoever the house was sold to 
on either side. I mean, it was, I mean, you know. You know, see, I'd never plowed shared driveways. Oh, okay. Um, thanks. I did Thank a couple you. of them. And uh, one page, one, two page, two, three, whatever. So you have 10. And then you divide it into the gazankas, and that's, your flag that's what you get paid. The problem is collecting. Okay. Yeah. This one don't want to pay, and lot one and two don't want to pay, and they don't want your service, but you have to plow through them to get to the back. And yeah, I, never, I wouldn't do that anymore. No. No. But you'll see on some of these, um, yeah. there's only town 12 that have guarantees at it. Mm -hmm. in that. You know, because some, the way I took it is some planning board members said, hey, so that's 50 foot there and they've got 150 back there you know oh and i'm sure that you know our houses were 1932 and i'm sure that the town of brunswick yeah didn't do anything <laughs> in relationship to these <laughs> right yeah i mean it's and the thing that and then the other thing i get a chuckle out of this is one of the comments that were made says well other towns do this and other towns do that and mm -hmm. i said if Johnny goes and jumps off the bridge, you're going to follow him. You know, we're not other towns. You know, the lay of the land is different. Nope, that's true. We are unique. And we can come up with our own ideas and stuff, you know. So well, we I, know that's doing. kind of what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is pretty flat. Yeah. You know, we go from elevation here of 540 to 930, you know. Yeah. That should be interesting. Yeah. We have, I'm gonna you know, drive around a little bit. We only have we only have the only river in the state that runs north. So. See, we are unique. Yeah. And on that note, anything else? I will make a motion to adjourn our meeting at 7:38 p.m. I'll suck it up. He's got cows right. to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Member Hetrick. Aye. Deputy Chair Hart. Aye. Chair Geisel. Aye. Good night, everyone. <laughs>